Hello everybody, uh, this is Dr. Anna, your physical geology professor. Our today's lecture is about weathering. Weathering is a very important chapter because this is where you're going to learn how the soil is forming on the surface. It will contain some chemistry which you might not like, but it is interesting because I'm going to teach you about the pH and what does that mean. So let's start with this little picture here. This shows two Egyptian obelisk. One of the two has been removed from Egypt to New York. What do you think? Which one? About 50, 60 years ago, I should say. Yes, you're right. The one on the right. And what happened to it? Yeah, it did weather. It had some chemical weathering. As you can see on these pictures, the, the writing can hardly be read anymore. Uh, compared to the one on the left, which hasn't changed much. So the writing is perfectly fine on it for 2,000 years or so. So you see, 50 years in New York have made a big difference for this obelisk. Could you also tell me what kind of rock is it made of? Yeah, most likely limestone. Why? Because what happened in New York? It went through chemical weathering. When the acid rain hits the limestone, it actually fizzes away, basically, it goes through chemical weathering. So it takes us to the, to, to the weathering, which is basically the name of the processes which uh, changes the composition of the original rock into something completely different. Basically, it decomposes the original rock. It is somewhat similar to the equilibrium process we learned in, in uh, the metamorphic rock chapter, because at certain temperature and pressure condition, only certain minerals are stable and all the other ones are not stable so they have to change to the new pressure temperature environment wherever they are in equilibrium or they will be stable in those environments. So if you look at most of the rocks are not forming at the STP which is the standard pressure temperature, you know, one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius, most of the rocks are not stable in this environment so therefore they will slowly go through this equilibrium process and change into something which is more stable in this environment. So here we are. Uh, we have two kinds of weathering and we already have learned some of that in the sedimentary rock so it's kind of just refresher. Remember the, the two major types is the physical or mechanical and the chemical weathering. And when you're talking about physical or mechanical weathering, basically what happens, the original rock is physically baking down, basically when you break up below something into smaller particles. So as it breaks apart, the original parent rock is still there. So the, the most important thing about physical weathering is at the end, you are going to be able to tell what the original rock composition was. On the other hand, when you have chemical weathering, it completely destroys the original minerals, so you will not be able to tell what kind it used to be. So let's start with the mechanical or physical weathering. Uh, as I already just said, told you, it's strictly mechanical or physical process. It will not change the chemical process. And these are the ones we have to talk about, the ice or frost wedging, the sheeting, ter thermal expansion, abrasion, um, the, the plant's root action, and animal burrows. So we have to go through all those. And let's start with the ice or frost wedging. When you have water penetrating through the rocks, what happens when it freezes? You all have had those experience when you left your uh, glass bottle in the freezer full of some kind of drink, I'm not going to say what kind, because it could be any kind. And uh, the next time you open the fridge, you had a bunch of broken glass pieces there and an ice in the shape of your bottle you put in. So what happened there? Exactly like when the, when the water freezes, it actually expands by 12% of its volume. So of its original volume. So therefore your glass bottle breaks because there is just not enough room for the water to crystallize into ice. So this is what happens outside 
during the winter when the temperature goes down the water in the in the rock um, fractures freezing and actually they basically hammer the rock apart uh, so what do you need what kind of environment will we see this kind of weathering we will have to have enough moisture and it have to have falling and rising temperature and of course rock with cracks which is given everywhere so the main thing is that you have to have humid climate and falling and rising temperature so this this a lot of the times will cause problems along the highway especially after the the spring towing when all these rocks which broke apart will fall off of the of the outcrop so it will say watch for falling rocks but i mean that won't really save you for the rocks falling because as you're driving you're supposed to wash the road and not the falling rocks so if if that sign is out there you just have to make sure that you 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 try to look out for falling rocks I have a bunch of pictures here which actually shows the process so here we are the, the water going into the cracks freezing making the cracks bigger so therefore the rocks will fall off and then you have all the fallen off particles right here and this is this is a good picture showing just exactly the the ice wedging or frost wedging and that one too so this here the picture shows what ha happening and that's the result of it the next one is the sheeting when you have rocks which form under high pressure, such as like your oceanic continental plate boundary, and you got these big granite intrusions forming down there under high pressure, when because of plate tectonics they get up to the surface, they actually start uh, expand because they have the pressure is not there anymore, so they just exfoliate. They just uh, go through this expansion and the expansion joints will form and these usually are parallel with the surface just like you see right here and so it's very easy for it to fall off slide down and it can cause a lot of problems um, along the roads um, this picture is in Yosemite there is a a whole lot of this kind of rock slides in Yosemite Valley it's very very characteristic but if you just go over the Blue Ridge Parkway and you go along the Blue Ridge we have very much of the same thing because we have on the Blue Ridge Parkway the Blue Ridge granite which is 1.1 billion years old and because it used to be deep down when it formed and now it's on the surface it has the same kind of processes going on the next one is the thermal expansion. To see thermal expansion, one really has to be in the desert because that's where we have these daily temperature cycles that during the day it could be 120 and at night it could be as cold as freezing. So you can imagine like a granite. The granite, every single mineral in the granite will expand differently during the high temperatures of the day and shrink when it's really, really cold every single day basically the minerals in the rocks are being hammered apart just like here so you'll have a lot of um, fragmentation and even sand sized particles will form this way too the next uh, physical weathering type is the abrasion and the abrasion is when the wind is blowing all the sand in the desert and um, basically the sand will carve the rocks around and make this amazing uh, sand carve formations just like on these pictures right here so the more durable the rock the more chance it has that it's gonna stay like that and uh, if you go out west a lot of those amazing rock formation are formed just like that mm, good coffee I just made so the next one is the root action and actually I forgot to tell you that uh, at the end of the semester you have to have a so-called picture project but it is in the syllabi so you can look it up when uh, when you work on your picture project after a couple of these chapters where you actually can see stuff around I want you to go out and take pictures of the stuff we're learning about like the root action or or sheeting or if you saw the ice wedging 
uh, take a picture of it and make a little notebook where you put the picture in. I would like you to write down what you see on that picture, like root action, and where did you take it and when. So where and when. And if you make seven of them, that's going to be a good low lab grade. But if you make more than seven, you can get extra credit for it. So ask me more about this project and, and then you can start working on it. So one of the possibilities is the root action. Look at this roots here. I bet the low seed started like in between the rocks cracks. And then as it grows, it actually makes the rock break apart. The roots has amazing force. So they can do that. And the other one is the possibility. Uh, like physical um, weathering possibility is when the animals burrow into the rocks and breaking them apart uh, like that. And now we are at the chemical weathering. The chemical weathering is when the rocks are completely decomposed, chemically I should say, and the, the minerals are completely destroyed and new minerals will be created. And in this case, uh, the water is always the primary source of the chemical weathering. And it has double um, function. One is that it, it carries uh, the, the particles which are already weathered away. So the new rock surfaces are going to be exposed. And the other one is that basically that is what's causing the weathering. So this slide actually, this picture shows it good. It is very important to understand that the degree and the rate of chemical weathering is influenced by the amount of precipitation and also how much of the rock is exposed. So if you have big pieces of rocks, not much of it will be exposed, but when you have a lot of cracks and little fractures, then you got much more rock surface exposed to the chemical weathering. On the other hand, you got to understand that if you think of the, the climate, then the chemical weathering is not very important in, in, in deserts. It's only important in humid areas. So these are the type of chemical weatherings, the dissolution, hydrolysis, and oxidation. So you've got to know them. So let's start with the dissolution. When you think of dissolution, you, you think of, and I, that reminds me to drink some more coffee. So I got my A right here. That's my coffee cup. It's a big one. And I like it because it fits a lot of coffee. So in this coffee, I just dissolve some sugar. Sugar, just by itself, will dissolve in water. And the other very, very uh, water-soluble mineral, which is really actually a, um, a chemical compound and mineral, is the halite. Remember the salt. Uh, the reason that the salt can dissolve in water is because the water has a so-called polar molecules. A lot of the other minerals, if you put them in water, it will not dissolve. But the halite will because the water is polar molecule and the halite is an ionic compound which actually dissolves in a polar uh, solution. So let's talk about what is polar solution means. And I have a slide here which is empty, so I will be able to draw it. I think I will be. Okay, so we have the water molecule. What is the composition of the water? You're right, H2O. It's covalently bounded, which means, remember, the, the um, particles are sharing electrons. That's how we're going to have electron pairs. And those electron pairs are going... Uh, around two nucleus at the same time. So that's how they share. And I'm talking about valence electrons, of course, remember. So H2O, and that is the composition of the water. So a water molecule will have two, one oxygen and two hydrogen. But what happens here, if you remember the hydrogen, and this is a silly thing, but I always say like that the hydrogen is the bisexual of the periodic table because what happens with hydrogen, remember, what is the atomic number of hydrogen? Yeah, it is one. And how many uh, electrons does it have there for? 
one when it's neutral. So one electron and one uh, proton. So the outermost shell is that one electron basically. And the first shell can only hold two electrons, remember? So for the hydrogen, if it gains an electron, how many electrons will it have? Two. Yeah, so therefore it's very, very happy. But what if it loses an electron? Then it doesn't have electron at all, so it's very, very stable in that case too. And that's why we put the hydrogen on the periodic ta table. Sometimes you can see it right here in the first column. Sometimes you can see it in the in at the very end because the hydrogen can behave um, either as a cation or as an anion. So therefore, hydrogen is not crazy about electrons. It doesn't matter to it if it gets one or loses one. Uh, in the periodic table, usually the way the elements are craving for electrons is what we call electron negativity, and it's increasing from left to right. So if you think of chlorine and uh, um, sulfur and oxygen and fluoride, these guys are really craving for uh, electrons. So if you compare the craving for electrons in case of hydrogen versus oxygen, which one likes electrons more? You're right, the oxygen. So in the water molecules, the sharing electron pairs actually going closer to the oxygen than to the hydrogen. So when you look at it as a molecule, there will be a little bit of more negative charge on the oxygen. It's not equal with one chemical charge, but it's going to be a little bit negative on the oxygen side and a little bit positive on the hydrogen side. That delta just means it's not equal one charge, but it's more than nothing. So when you put the salt in this water, which has these polar molecules, then the salt will break and which side the sodium uh, ions are going to go? Yeah, they are going to this side because that's the negative, and the chlorines will go to this side. So that's why the ionic halide, when you put it in water, will dissolve because the water has the so-called polar molecules, so don't forget that. Now the next thing I will, we will talk about is the pH or the acidity of the, of the liquid. And I just wanted you to tell me a couple of common acids, and I know because I'm just talking here, so I can't hear what you're saying, but I hope you are saying it at home. I wrote down a couple of common acids you have heard about, like the hydrochloric acid. That's what we use to tell the limestone or the calcite apart. Then the sulfuric acid, which is very common when you have volcanic eruptions, the sulfuric acid forms right there. Also, the acid drain, remember the pyrite? in the coal, when they burn it in the power plant, will produce a lot of hydro, uh, sulfuric acid. That's why we have the acid rain. So that's a very common acid. Then you got the hydrofluoric acid, which is very, very strong acid. Uh, carbonic acid. And then the nitric acid. And the acetic acid. What is uh, common in all these acids? You're right, the hydrogen, see, every single one of them has hydrogen in them. So basically, the hydrogen ion is what makes the acids acidic. So when we want to know how acidic a solution is, we have to measure the, the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Okay, so if you measure the concentration of the hydrogen ion, you're going to know what is the acidity of the solution. So this is how we write this down, hydrogen ion concentration. And when I say concentration, I just put these brackets here, and this shows you that we're talking about concentration here. Now, usually the numbers of the for the hydrogen uh, uh, concentration in, in just normal regular water is like 10 to the minus 7, hydrogen ion comfort. Uh, concentration is equal about 10 to the minus 7 and I want you to tell me what does that mean like if you want to write it over into zeros and um, you know decimal points and zeros 
how many zeros do I have to draw like right before I write the one? It's point. 10 to the minus 7 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros and 1 right here. So if it's 10 to the minus 7, then you have to move the decimal point by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's 10 to the minus 7. Okay, my next question is, how many zeros do you have to put down if, let's say, I said that it was 10 to the minus 3? How many zeros is that? Yeah, that is point, O, O, and then 1. So, the next question is, how much bigger this number then this one right here. It's easy to tell if you're not very familiar with the with the um, metric system. I'm going to tell you right now. So you're going to count the number of zeros here. It's after the decimal point. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In this one, it's after the decimal point. It's 1, 2. So the difference is 6 minus 2 it's 4, so it's 10 to the 4, basically, what, what is the difference. So this number is 10,000 times bigger than this number. It's very important for me to, to tell you and you understand. So it's 10,000 times bigger number than this one. If we set 10 to the minus 1, then will it have any zeros? No, it's going to be point 0.1. So how much bigger this number than this number? Again, count the zeros. It's 1, 2, and there is no 0 here. So this number is 100 times bigger. So this is 10,000 times bigger. And this one is 100 times bigger than the one before. Now, this is really, really powerful because people didn't really want to deal with all these zeros, so they have decided that when we work back, work with uh, pH, right, I mean, we work with the acidity of the solution, it's easy to just call it pH, and that's how they show it, pH, and they said it's going to be equal to negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, so right here, which basically takes care of the zeros. So if it's neg it's if the hydrogen ion concentration is ten to the minus six, then the negative log of ten to the minus six is going to be equal to six. It's that simple. So do you understand? This is really really important that you understand this. I hope you're not. If if you don't, then just ask me in the lab again, because um, see this this will have a pH of seven. This will have a pH of of um, three, and this will have a pH of one. So it's important that you understand that. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right here, and we'll continue in the next segment. So this was segment one, weathering in physical geology. Bye for now.